In this lecture, we will look at modified Hamilton's principle. We have already seen the Hamilton's principle from where we got Euler Lagrange equation. We would like to briefly recall what we did. What we did is this we defined an integral where we integrated the Lagrangian of a system over time from t1 to t2 and we mentioned that if we make a variation over which this integration is carried out if we make a variation in the path then with respect to tiny variation about the correct path the integral shows an extremum which means the change in the integral is zero if the path is varied from the correct path by an infinitesimal amount. What we considered is we considered a particle which starts from say t1 from some position q1 goes to uh, q2 at a later time t2 and suppose for this particular path we calculate i store the number and then we make a tiny variation in the path such that the endpoints are there are no variation which means at t1 the new path starts from q1 and at t2 it ends up at q2 but in the intermediate time for each t there would be a change in the path this is a like a virtual displacement not happening in real time but at each given time we shift qt to uh, some you know uh, by an amount uh, that too we defined before that we wrote qt as a function of alpha to be qt0 plus alpha times where eta is basically the change in the path and if we have multiple generalized coordinates then for each generalized coordinate we added a variation alpha is a single parameter which help us keeping track of whether we are making the variation or not if we make the variation alpha is non zero if we are not making variation for actual path alpha is zero so our uh, requirement that it will be an extremum the integral was very simply uh, this condition we showed earlier that this condition results in Euler Lagrange equation okay now we would like to carry out something similar but this time we would like to do it for the Hamiltonian so we would like to see how we get Hamilton's equations so what we do is we use uh, our uh, definition of the Hamiltonian which if you recall it was just this pj qj dot minus l of course there is a sum over j because we are using Einstein summation convention so we are not writing the sum all the time so if that happens then uh, that tells us that our uh, modified equation now this integral we can write it as t1 to t2 and it would be just pj qj dot minus h so we just replace l by an equivalent description once that is done we would like to carry out the similar procedure that we did before so we take the partial derivative of i the integral and we can push the partial derivative in and we get The last two terms are essentially the chain rule on the Hamiltonian and the first two terms are regular 
derivative partial derivative on the product pj's and qj's are assumed to be independent of each other so i mean suppose we get all these terms then we need one more trick i look at this term we uh, the term together overall we have pj and del del alpha of ddt of qj we know we showed it earlier that it is possible to rewrite this as and we can write it as the total time derivative of the product and from there we subtract so we replace the second term by these two terms and you see the integration involving the total time derivative of this product is straightforward we just have to evaluate um the in this quantity pj and del qj del alpha at the end points so we will have if we collect the terms like we will have qj dot minus del h del pj this is basically the coefficient of del pj del alpha and similarly we will have this particular term we got it from the replacement this is the term plus we have evaluated at the end point now del qj del alpha if you remember it was one of our independent quantity which by definition vanishes at the end point so as such this term goes to zero because this partial derivative is zero at t1 and also at t2 and what about what we have inside now if you look at the second term the del qj del alpha that is eta j for each generalized coordinate it is independent and what about del pj del alpha well we have not defined any variation of the pj but we can do that just like we did it for qj we can similarly do it so it is exactly same as i um, mean qj in the sense qj if you recall this was the variation this is how we parameterized the variation of qj so del pj del alpha is kappa j and del qj del alpha is eta j these are independent independent in the sense by choice they are independent now if we demand this entire integral vanishes and we have terms which are coefficient of independent quantity del pj del alpha and del qj del alpha then if we use this fundamental lemma of calculus which we did before then it's clear that each of this coefficient must vanish and that will give us Uh, in a straightforward way the following set of equations but these are nothing but hamilton's equation so we see that if we modify hamilton's principle by redefining the action integral rewriting the action integral in terms of the pj qj dot and minus the hamiltonian and then uh, from there we get the hamilton's equation of motion one big difference between these variations is for eta j for the variation of the path in the configuration space the eta j must vanish at the end point we need that 
to have this term going to zero. Okay, just like we did it uh, previously when we applied Hamilton's principle. But for kappa j, for the variation in the path uh, involving the uh, momentum in the phase space, this this uh, kappa j does not have to go to zero at the end point. I mean, there are no such integral which must vanish involving kappa j or involving del p j del alpha. So, which means that we still uh, restrict ourselves with the old condition that in the configuration space generalized coordinate their variation at the end point must vanish but no such restriction exists for the generalized momentum. Okay. In the next lecture we will see uh, another important principle a very important principle called the principle of list action.